I think I should have done this kind of video a long while ago, at least around the start of when I actually came to China. Um, but I think in my head, I didn't think I could create something that would be informative and entertaining at the same time. There are a lot of channels out there that describe life in other countries, like one of them like abroad in Japan, where he talks about his life um, and how he does things in Japan. But despite being in China for what, nine, ten months now, I still don't know a whole lot about it. I have my daily life that I can talk about, but not enough for me to completely get videos on to tell people what it's like. So I think I'll start with the basics. I came to China October 23rd. Yes, I came to October 20 I came to China October 23rd. On my birthday, funnily enough. Um, I got to Shanghai at 10 at night and I drove to Yangzhou for four hours. Um, so it was quite late by the time I'd actually gotten to my apartment. And in a sort of days, you know, you're, you're on a flight for 13 hours or something like that. And then you're driving for another four. You get home and you want to just fall into bed. And the first thing that was a shock to me is how solid the bed is. They're not like spring beds, at least this one isn't, or feather beds, it's like wood, almost, you know, like wood chippings that have been put together. I'm used to the bed now, it's actually really comfy, but that's because I've gotten used to it. But when I got into Yangzhou and I got to my apartment at what, two, three, four in the morning, and sat down in that bed, I was like, oh God, I think I might have to sit on my couch and sleep instead. I don't know how I can sleep on that. Thankfully I did. Anyway, and I've gotten used to it. That's one of the first things that I noticed simply in my apartment that was quite a shock to me. Obviously the other big thing, but I was expecting it, was the internet. If you know about China, you know China has a firewall. So China blocks a lot of media um, that they don't necessarily agree with or from sources. Um, I already knew about that. I've I spend a lot of time on the computer. You can see it right there. So I had already prepared a VPN and all that just to get it. But it's been a bit annoying since I rely on <clears throat> using all these sites that are blocked, all the Google sites essentially. Um, Discord, Reddit, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Inst all the typical ones, even games. Um, some typical game servers aren't allowed uh, on consoles as well. So to circumnavigate that with a VPN has been quite awkward um, because while you can use a VPN to get around things, VPNs aren't reliable, especially in China when they're trying to squash them. Um, I use Express for the PC and it doesn't always work. Um, so I have to rely on another VPN just to simply connect, but then that VPN doesn't allow me to use other apps. It's, that's the big shock to me personally because of how much I relied on my internet for all sorts of things, just to even talk and watch things. and. Some people might say, oh, you knew this was coming, or maybe I should just get past it, but it's still a big shock, and it's something I should at least tell for people who might be interested in coming to China, um, that VPNs are the end all solution to your uh, internet problem. The third thing that kind of stuck out to me in the first, let's say, couple of days and weeks was the money. And I arrived and I didn't get a lot of money and I didn't have a lot of money. But the cost to eat was cheap. And I mean like stupidly cheap. Um, I read, obviously I do my research, but I move into a country. So I had to research what the countries were like. And I knew the cost of living 
in China was fairly cheap if you were in, in Shanghai or Beijing. Like one of the big ones was this little cafe type thing and they had dumplings and what's called rojamo which is like a Chinese hamburger and they had like rice and all sorts of but obviously rice is fairly cheap anywhere so I'd order like some dumplings, uh, rojamo and rice and I think it came to something like three pounds like what 30 RMB I think it is which is stupid because I'm tr I try to picture like what could, what kind of meal could I buy like a three pound meal deal from like Tesco or Sainsbury's or something like that. It gets me like a sandwich and a drink, not like dumplings, a massive portion of rice and Chinese hamburgers. It's wild and that's just like the first one. Then you go to other like pr big proper restaurants and everything is still really cheap. like. Like even some of the more expensive things are only pushing into the £10 region, like for UK pricing, you know, £10, which is insane. The fact that I can go to these mid-tier, I'd say, I haven't been to many expensive places yet, but I know the expensive places are expensive, like really expensive. But I can go to very mid-tier restaurants um, and have this like high, like this really delicious like Chinese like I'll get to how good Chinese food is soon and like even like Japanese Western Korean different kinds of food for how like for that cheap and the portion sizes as well it's it's still something that I can't get used to and it's still something I talk about when telling other people it's 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 one of the most mind-blowing things to me, and one of the big things that I think is really good here. Um, so delving into Chinese food, um, I wouldn't call myself a picky eater. I knew what I didn't like because I tried it, and I knew what I did like. And I, I try anything. I will try it the first time. If I don't like it, I don't like it. I haven't experienced Chinese food in the UK. There are. I didn't go to many authentic Chinese restaurants and I couldn't find many authentic Chinese restaurants. And the most experience I would have, and I'd say quite a lot of other people in Scotland would have, is Chinese takeaway, which as you know, isn't Chinese food. Um, it's like a Chinese American hybrid of food that has little in like, tiny instances of Chinese cuisine but for the most part it's not because you're not getting like fries and chicken balls from a Chinese restaurant here that's just not happening so as for experiencing Chinese food uh, it was probably it was the first when I first arrived after driving about two or three hours to Yangzhou we stopped at this 24 hour shopping centre and there was a couple of restaurants open which already surprised me because they weren't takeaway places like you'd expect in say the UK where like Indian Chinese takeaways that are open quite late. This was what two in the morning this shopping centre with restaurants that were open and they sold us um ready to order dumplings um and soy milk that blew me away straight away and then we got to try them and maybe it was i was already i was very tired maybe it was because all i had ate in the past day was airplane food but those dumplings were phenomenal there were two different kinds i can't tell you what they are i can describe one of them's shapes like a little like you pinch the top and there were sticking little strands sticking out but they were so nice and i was already excited just to have dump like Chinese food and I was, they had ordered so many and I was shocked because there was only like three of us, four of us in the car <laughs> um, and then we went back home and then uh, we woke up in the morning the next day to go and have breakfast and one of the big things that we learned is dumplings are breakfast, I have one of, a kind of dumplings are breakfast in China 
um, it took a bit of getting used to for me because dumplings for me are a lunch or dinner kind of thing. So having these kind of big like, hand dumplings for breakfast along with um, a bunch of other dishes I talk about was a bit of a okay and um, but again it was tasted really good I was genuinely surprised by how amazing this food is these massive dumplings like full of meat and veg I was like oh this is I'm so excited to try more and more and more Chinese food um, and then what was the other dish so we had like dumplings these big dumplings so like these things like one dumpling that probably would have satisfied me for breakfast and then they'd ordered so I had these we had like these this like veg dish this dumpling that they gave you a straw for because you were meant to drink the broth that was inside it rather than eat it with your chopsticks or your hand um, and then they had another thing which I think was called it's a, it's a Yang, Yangzhou's specialty, it's called Lion's Head and it's not an actual lion's head because I know some people will instantly think that um, it's just this like meat ball and veg I can't completely remember it, you'll see the photo but it tasted really good, it was very soft, almost it nearly went liquidy, it was strange, It was, but it was delicious it was flavours that I haven't experienced in my country even in other restaurants like Japanese restaurants like which I'll say now are my favorite kind so like that these different flavors I was experiencing were it was hard for me to grasp immediately um but I but yeah that was like that, that was a breakfast and I won't talk more about food right now but just to say like those first two instances of me having food in the first 12 hours of arriving in China set me up for what was going to be, oh, still is, a crazy, crazy food cuisine of different, like, oh my god, I can't, it's so hard to explain. But the amount of dishes, the, how cheap they are, the flavours, the different ingredients are crazy. Uh, I'll, I'll talk more about it maybe in another video if this one at least does well. This one isn't so much a shock so as it was more fun for me. Yangzhou is a big city um, by my standards. All the residents here and people, my friends will tell me that Yangzhou is a small city. And I will quote what someone told me, Yangzhou is very small. It only has a population of four. 0.4 million. Now that's the obviously Chinese people are going to consider 4.4 million small when they have a population of like 1.5 billion. Um, but for me, coming from a country with 4.4 million is nearly my country's population. That's mind blowing. I live in a city of 4 million, and it's considered small. So. The first day, and my first proper day in Yangzhou, I was picked up by some people from my work, and they took me into shop my where my work is. And the first thing you really know as a foreigner is you get stared at. There are not a lot of foreigners in Yangzhou, despite there being some foreign like teaching schools. Um, there aren't a lot of foreigners. It's quite rare. Or I'd say there's not as many issues as I'd expect. So, people stare. I'm not used to people staring at me. When people stared at me back home, I thought I looked really funny, like I'd messed up something. Maybe I forgot to wear trousers, something like that. You know that panic when someone stares at you and you're like, what have I done wrong? But here they stare at you. Kids and old people especially stare at you because they've never seen a white person or like a foreigner so it's that's one of the things that I not like had to get used to quite quickly they they just stare and they're not like subtle about it they will you walk past them and they will look at you with wide eyes until you're gone like they'll just go 
until you're gone. It's and sometimes it can get a little annoying. Sometimes you want to turn around and say, "What do you want?" Like that kind of thing. But you know they're just staring at you because them they've never seen you before. Kids are fine. It's fun. It's funny when kids stare at you. They're just not used to you. Um, and that's just one of the small things that, that I was getting used to. Um, but being a foreigner in Yangzhou means that I've had some interactions. Um, I've been to restaurants and hairdressers and they've never had foreigners before so they go and take photos with me, take videos to advertise like their business on like TikTok or like WeChat. I've seen that I, like it's happened three or four times to me now where the owners have come and taken videos or photos with me to show off because they don't have foreigners so their idea like the advertisement is even foreigners want to come here look at this we've got foreigners coming to our business um i never get discounts but it's funny to know that my face is like going across a couple of platforms just simply because i'm white like because i'm a foreigner it's funny um so that's one of the things that it still happens um to this day, it still happens to this day that people will just stare at you. I'm used to it now, it's fine that people stare at you. You occasionally get a couple of kids who look a little bit frightened of you. You get some teenage girls or like the younger girls who just laugh at you. Um, that one hurts a little because it brings up bad memories, but um, that's one of the small, smaller things that you I would get used to. I have a feeling I've rambled quite a bit, but that's kind of the way I talk, so I might, I might write a script next time, um, but if you want any more of these kind of videos, just let me know. And yeah, this is my life in China, <laughs> episode one, I guess. See ya.